Welcome back everyone to another UK Space News update. This past week's been busy and exciting with the launch of ESA's JUICE mission, British built payloads on SpaceX's Transporter 7 rideshare flight, we get the latest on the Virgin Orbit situation, and a look at what's happening stateside as apparently there's some big rocket everyone's talking about. Plenty to dive into for sure, so stick around and let's get going. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Okay everyone, welcome back. It's been a few weeks since my last update, and that's because UK Space Chris and I have, were busy preparing for the launch of ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer mission. This was all set to launch from the European Launch Complex at French Guiana on Thursday the 13th of April. Chris and I sat down to bring you this incredible event, the most important scientific launch of the year. But what do you know, the weather was against us. Yep, with a risk of lightning at the range with T-9 minutes on the clock, the launch was aborted. So the teams reset everything and came back the following day to do it all over again. Chris and I couldn't be with you this time, but thankfully the weather held and around 8.15 local time, the mighty Ariane 5 took to the skies on its penultimate ever flight before it's replaced by the Ariane 6 later this year. A short while later, the fairing separated and Juice got its first taste of space, with the spacecraft separating from the rocket a little over half an hour into the flight. At T plus 40 minutes, we got the first big mission milestone with acquisition of signal to the ground and then the massive 85 square meter solar wing successfully deployed as Juice raised its height from Earth ever higher to start its epic eight year voyage to Jupiter. Of course, this mission is designed to explore Jupiter and three of its Galilean icy moons. Callisto, Europa and Ganymede, the largest moon in our solar system, looking for subsurface liquid water and to determine if they might be habitable. The spacecraft is jam-packed with scientific experiments including a UV imager, optical camera, radar, particle environment package and the UK built JMAG magnetometer. Now, Eight years seems an awfully long time to get to Jupiter, but the spacecraft only has a 425 Newton bipropellant engine, utilising a mix of monomethyl hydrazine and mixed nitrogen oxidizer. So, a series of gravity assists from the Earth, Moon and even Venus is going to allow it to pick up enough speed to go the hundreds of millions of miles to get to the Jovian system. Crucially though, this carefully planned series of manoeuvres will also mean that Juice is not going too fast, allowing it to slow down once it reaches the Jovian system. All going well, Juice will reach Jupiter in around mid-2031, and over the next four years it will make detailed observations of its targets, before entering its final phase by actually entering into orbit around Ganymede, becoming the first spacecraft ever to orbit a moon that isn't the Earth's. Now, you can follow along with Juice's progress by going to the ESA website. I've included a link in the description to that below. Next, on April the 14th as well, depending on where you are stateside, SpaceX launched their next transporter rideshare mission. The Transporter 7 mission took off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, carrying 51 international small satellites, including several built in the UK. As usual, SpaceX put on quite the show from liftoff to MECO, stage separation, fairing deployment and the landing of the booster. AAC Clyde Space launched their Epic Hyper 1 for customer Wyvern Space, a 6U sized CubeSat spacecraft with a hyperspectral imager for carrying out Earth observations. We also had on board the much anticipated, on this channel at least, Broker 1 satellite from Astroforge, built here in the UK by Orb Astro. I talked about this particular mission a few videos back and it's interesting as it's the first test model designed to demonstrate Astroforge's asteroid mining concept by carrying an asteroid-like material into orbit, which it's then going to vaporise into its various elemental components. Then from Scotland we had several uh, pocket cube Pico satellites built by Alba Orbital. These include the ROM Space ROM 2, an educational radio repeater, imager and beacon satellite uh, built for Romania, as well as the MRC 100 satellite built for BME of Hungary. 
It's really cool to see all of this British built hardware continuing to fly into space despite the fact that we no longer have a mainland launch service available at the moment. Speaking of that, over the past few weeks we've seen a lot of activity from Virgin Orbit and quite frankly not all of it is good. On April the 4th, Virgin Orbit announced that they were filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the United States while they try and sell the company, at the same time laying off 85% of their workforce. On the back of that, however, a small team returned to work and continued preparations on their next launcher one, Rocket 8. The plan from Virgin Orbit is to still fly the remaining customer payloads into orbit and they're hoping their next launch is successful in order to forge ahead with their sale. Of course, a good launch would put them in good light for any future potential buyers of the company. Talking of epic levels of hype, it would be remiss of me not to mention the biggest event in spaceflight this year. That's right, I'm talking about the first flight test of the fully stacked Starship and Super Heavy booster from SpaceX. Over the past week, things at Starbase Texas have really heated up with preparations for this upcoming event. Over the past weekend, the FAA in America granted SpaceX a launch license and a target date of April the 17th was set. Yes, this is the big one folks. The fully stacked Starship will be the largest rocket in history to take flight when it launches from the Stage 0 launch pad and I frankly cannot wait to see this thing fly. On April the 17th, the same date that I recorded this video, the whole world waited with bated breath as Starship was filled to the brim with cryogenic propellant and liquid oxidizer. Over the next few hours, all seemed to be going to plan and we watched the clock tick down. However, at around T-20 minutes, notice came that the team were experiencing a pressure related fault in the first stage and would you know it, the launch was scrubbed. SpaceX opted to keep the clock counting down to T-40 seconds and use the remaining time as opportunity to evaluate a full wet dress rehearsal. Following the scrub, we got word that the fault lay in a frozen pressure valve and the team started to offload a massive amount of propellant on board. This recycling and reset procedure is due to take up to 48 hours to complete with the next expected launch date around April the 19th or possibly April the 20th. Would you know, that's 420 in America. Now, that wasn't all the fun from stateside this past week. Tori Bruno, the CEO of United Launch Alliance, or ULA, shared this video of an explosion at a test stand at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. This explosion was allegedly caused by a hydrogen buildup inside the test rig. Uh, the state of the damage to the Vulcan Centaur first stage isn't quite known yet, but this is likely to set back their planned May the 4th launch date, the first flight for this much delayed brand new rocket from ULA. Now, if you did make it all the way through this video, I want to say thank you very much. I really do appreciate your support and it goes a long way to helping this channel continue to grow, especially where that pesky algorithm is concerned. If you have enjoyed this video, do consider giving it a little like and if you've not subscribed, why not? Also, tick that notification bell for future UK Space News updates. Thank you all so very much for watching. I've been Tom June and I'll see you next time.